This video records an interview with three young women activists the week after the March 24th March for Our Lives, in which all over the country, over a million people in the United States, many of them young, most of them young, marched against gun violence. The inspiration for this march was the profoundly intense activism of the Parkland, Florida students who stepped out and stepped up to protest and to demand social change after the shooting at their schools. For so many of us, feminists in particular, and a generation who worked for social change, we learned from these young people. They are our future and they are amazing. While we are marveling at the power of these young people, let us remember that the psychoanalyst Eric Erickson always thought adolescence, the stage of the crisis of identity, was actually a time of great potential idealism and ethical courage. Look at the documentary footage of the civil rights movement. See how the young, how young the people were in those marches and demonstrations that changed that world. Here are three young women, Alice Wolfson, Georgia Richardson-Smaller, and Cleo Shine, and they tell us their stories. Let me ask you what sort of started your interest in either activism in general or this particular issue of gun control in particular? Um, well, in general, I first got exposed to like activism when I was this, in the seventh grade and first got social media. I there discovered like feminism, except it was very much white feminism and not intersectional at all. And I started educating myself when I came to the school, when I was a freshman in high school, on different topics and how that affects political policy, such as gentrification and voting rights. And really explored like intersectionality in feminism and then I really became involved in activism when I went this summer to the ACLU summer advocacy program and it was a week-long program where different ACLU lawyers educated us on different topics and how to apply that to activism in our community um when I well for gun control in particular uh I have a close, a close group of friends from the ACLU who also started organizing walkouts at their schools. And I was in France for the past three months. And so I wasn't really in touch with work here in the United States, but I really wanted to, do, to be because it's something I'm very passionate about. And so I started working on organizing a trip from my school to the New York City March for Our Lives when I was in Paris. And gun control is just something that's important to me. I'm, honestly pretty much everyone who I know because us as young adults we're worried about our safety we're worried about our future and even so like in 30 40 years when we do have children our children are our age we don't want them want them to have to worry about the same things we did when they were of their age I think even for many of the more conservative people I know they agree that some like school violence and school gun violence is something that isn't a political issue, and they have also become involved in activism on campus. So, so that has crossed political lines, the gun control issue. Yeah. Yes. So tell me what's been uh, the most, what's the most gratifying ex part of the experience of doing this work, and, and what's the most difficult part? Um, definitely the most gratifying is getting people involved in activism who haven't before. When I organized this march, I really didn't, well, the, organized the trip to the march, I didn't expect as big as a, of a turnout as I got. Because although people on, for example, my campus, the Chilt Rosemary Hall campus, do care a lot about political issues, they don't really involve themselves in things that help better this world. And I feel like it's because there was a lot of backlash in resulting to really standing up to what you believe in just because some issues are politicized very heavily. And it was honestly amazing to see so many people from so many different backgrounds show up and involve themselves in something that they truly care about. And one of the harder things in this experience has been honestly the same thing involving people. In my uh, in Chilt Rosemary Hall, we have about 50-50% 
Republicans and Democrats, and there's a lot of the Republicans are Trump supporters. And it's been very interesting to see how they respond to a lot of the activism that's happening on campus. And while a lot of them are extremely intelligent, and I love having very thoughtful and intelligent conversations with them about, for example, gun control, but a lot of them don't really have, like, feel the need to educate themselves and are very ignorant to anything, like, to open their minds. So it's been hard to discuss certain ideas that I share with other people because mm-hmm. they're not very open to change. And you, you use the word backlash, um, which I think we're hearing a little about in the press, uh, perhaps towards some of the kids from Parkland. But are you also, you know, having to, you and, and your community that are working on this, are you feeling some of the effects of backlash also? Um, perhaps from some of the students, not the administration. My school's administration is extremely progressive and they like to support their students on all of their endeavors. I think, well, this past week, my school newspaper has published a series of articles on gun control and activism in the Choke community, and a lot of them have been centered on my friends and I and how we had really spoken our minds and been very open about our opinions in this debate about gun control. And there have been certain students, certain like faculty members, certain parents who don't agree with anything that we've said and have complained either directly to me or to someone else about how they feel that my like the students here at the school and perhaps the administration itself is too involved in politics and wow. if I will like yeah like sorry wow that's amazing <laughs> too involved in politics it's the whole point yeah I mean there's a certain stigma around people my age that we're too young to know anything about this like we're six I'm 16 years old like what should I know about policy what should I know about things that will affect me for the rest of my life but the truth be told like this is something I'm truly passionate about and something I think everyone should be passionate about. I think people should care about what happens to them in their future and what their like their children's future should be like. You know, um, one of the things that's interested me about young people's activism is that it actually makes a lot of sense psychologically. And there's interesting writing about adolescence as an important time of idealism. In fact, and if you look at the documentaries of the civil rights marches, you will be really startled at how young everybody was on that march. And so I think I'd want to put in a pitch for feeling utterly that you're just in the right spot to do this work. And it's very exciting for my generation to see all this. So um, can you tell me a, a little about how you think, um, what in your formation or in your history um, has, do you think, contributed to your being uh, interested in these issues and interested in politics? Because you've done a lot. Um, you know, going to a conference at the ACLU is a serious <laughs> matter. Um, well, I'm a first-generation American, and I grew up alongside my parents. We learned English at approximately the same time. We became immersed in American culture at the same time. And my parents were, were they're from Russia. And it was a very stark difference for them when they came to America. And like a lot of immigrant families, we struggled a lot financially. And I think that really shaped my moral views. I have really, I think that's one of the main things about me. Like my sense of like, I have a real sense of what is important, what is vital to a child. I think having grown up with understanding different struggles because I, um, I'm a white Jewish girl from New York City. I'm very privileged, and I have been very privileged. And I think it's an honor for me to be able to understand that I have certain privileges and don't have certain privileges. So I grew up, and I understand the value of money, the value of being white, the value and importance of having, of cherishing the things I have, and being under, to being able to understand why I don't have certain other things. And I think that's has been important to me because as soon as I got exposed to intersectionality, I began to understand why it is 
that I have more privilege than others and some people have more privilege than me. Yeah. And I think that's also important because this doesn't, like intersectionality and feminism doesn't just, like, it's not just important to like what my generation calls social justice warriors. It's something that is implemented in politics and policy. And I really truly believe that my generation, because we have educated ourselves on so many different topics, that our future will be better off because we have been educated and we've been exposed to so many different eras. Like with the Obama administration and now the Trump administration, we've seen two very stark differences of what this world can be. So um, just what do you think is next for you? What's, where, where are you, where do you think this is taking you as a next step? Honestly? I don't have a concrete plan. Well, I'm a junior in high school, so right now college is a very important thing in my life. In terms of activism, I'll go wherever I need to be, whether it's organizing another trip to another march, I'll be there. I'm currently in the process of organizing a walkout at my school on April 20th to commemorate the anniversary of Columbine. And if there's a march for healthcare, a march for taxes, I'll be there. I'll be trying to organize as many things as I possibly can because I truly do believe in a lot of different things. I have very strong beliefs. And in the next three or four years, I mean, college, I want to study political science and pre-law and somehow learn to apply my activism to truly shaping a career around that and truly applying that to policy. Sounds wonderful. Sounds great to hear. Ask you kind of how you got started of uh, thinking about these issues or working on them and what your what your sort of background in doing this is mm -hmm. okay um so I guess it all starts with my family I've always had a pretty like um, I guess supportive family and they've always been really interested in politics I mean I wake up every morning the news is on I'm always watching CNN I'm not um, stuff like that. Um, and then I guess just through like my friend group and I do this, um, like extracurricular called youth in government, which is basically like engaging high school students in like parliamentary procedure and like passing bills and the legislative process. So that's another big part of kind of why I started, I guess, paying more attention to what's going on. So you, then, you, sorry, can I just ask you, you um, teach this to high school kids or you were, learned this as a kid in high school, as in when you're in high school, that, poli it's called Politics in Action? No, it's called Youth in Government. Youth it's in like government. a, so it's a lot of like high schools participate in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's like a club, I guess, kind of, not really, there's like, you meet um, at like the state capitol of Lansing. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of high school students and everyone goes there with like a bill that they create and then you work with other students to get your bill passed and it's like a mock government. So there's like the youth governor, um, the Senate, the House, the like press, the press people and there's like a t all different like groups and everyone just debates. Yeah. So, so you get a kind of practice at being political. Yeah, it's great. It's really cool. And yeah, so I guess that's kind of what got me interested in politics, just because I've participated in, the, participated in that since like seventh grade. And then also, I guess, just like just the issues. I mean, we're constantly bombarded with like news every day. I mean, it's really hard to like, I guess, not know what's going on. Um, and then like the issues that are being talked about just really like shock me, I guess. And that's why... I like take interest in them and take interest in like both sides of what's going on and how I can personally make an impact in what's going on. What, what are the things that have shocked you most, say, in the last year or so? What would you say? Um, definitely gun violence and a lot with, I guess, just like human rights in general. I remember when, um, like, on, I think... It was 2015, I believe, 2015 or 2014, when it was legal for, like, gay people to get married. Um, and I just remember thinking, like, wow, like, how 
why is it just now that this is legal? Like, what's wrong with, like, two people being in love with each other? And then, like, as different, like, monumental things happened, I guess I just started to realize that, like, the world wasn't as perfect and nice as I thought it was. And then I started really researching things myself and kind of starting to talk to my, ask questions about it. And, yeah, that's how I got kind of involved with politics, I guess. Mm -hmm. And have you been um, sort of active in the work uh, coming out of the Parkland shooting and around the getting the school walkouts and the marches? And how, what has that been like to work on? So I helped organize our school's walkout, and we did it a little differently than the national one. So we did ours at a different time, um, just for safety reasons, I guess. We fortunately had the backing and support of our administration to get um, police to kind of watch the students as they walked out so we could be safe and still um, feel like we could express our opinions and our kind of just get everything out in the open and our feelings about what had happened because that was a really shocking thing and school shootings before that had been shocking and not even just school shootings, the Orlando shooting and yeah, it doesn't always just take place in a school. But um, the goal of our school walkout was mostly to educate people because at my school, there are people that are really interested in politics and really interested in knowing what's going on, but there's a lot of kids that just really genuinely don't understand, and they didn't understand kind of the pattern and why it was so shocking that this keeps happening and why it keeps happening. So the point of our school walkout was to educate people and not really like push our um, like opinions on what the solution should be onto people who just don't understand because we thought that wouldn't be as effective. So we kind of emphasized statistics about school shootings, the victims who were killed at Parkland, um, how many school shootings there have been, how many students have died, and stuff like that. And there had been um, an armed gunman on campus at Central Michigan University, which is where a lot of students from my high school school um, do or have graduated. That was super shocking to a lot of people at my school that it was so close to home. So we meant, so we talked about that a lot. And then for the March for Our Lives, our town did one, and I helped this woman organize the student aspect of it. So like I spoke at it, and then a few of my friends also spoke. And we actually led the march because she wanted, she wanted it to be students leading and kind of everyone following in support mm -hmm. because it was school shootings that we were talking about. So those were two big things that I participated in participated in um, with this movement. And then I also spoke to this woman um, that was part of, um, it's like 99, 92.7 or 99.7, I forget the exact radio thing. But um, I did like a phone interview and she asked me questions about the march and I was kind of just trying to like promote it and get people to come out if they were on the fence about participating in their local March for Our Lives. So what I'm really interested in what you said, which is that part of what you're doing is trying to teach your peers who may not be sort of so in, sort of invested and informed about this. And so part of it is political action out to the you know, wider community, but some part of it is about educating your own generation. And yeah. Which seems really, mm -hmm. really yeah, important. I think, yeah, I think it's really important that people get educated on what's going on so that people especially like in my generation where a lot of people, I mean, their opinions usually come from their parents when you're really young and you don't really understand what's going on. So a big part of what we were trying to do was get people educated on what was happening and get them to kind of make that connection themselves um, through their peers and not their parents about what was going on and so they could come to the realization themselves that like this is a big issue and this needs to change. And we weren't saying like, you know, ban all guns or like the NRA is like horrible. We weren't like pushing our like opinions onto them at all. We were more just trying to get them to see the pattern and make the connection so they could come to the realization on their own. So tell me, what's the most difficult and challenging part of this whole experience you're having around political activism? Where are the challenges? Where are the difficulties, would you say? I would say probably 
The biggest challenge is kind of pushing past that first barrier of, like, getting people to actually listen to you and getting people to take into consideration the other side's argument. Um, And I guess just understanding what the laws are currently and understanding what people are actually proposing to change. Because when people hear gun control, a lot of, not a lot of people, but some people, especially um, in my generation, who's, I guess, like if their families like hunt a lot or if their families are just, have just owned guns like all their lives and that's like all they've known. Um, So a lot of times when most people hear gun control, they think like ban all guns, like they're trying to take away our guns, like, and everything like that. And like when they hear background checks or anything, they hear like they're trying to ban us from getting guns, not the people that shouldn't be getting guns. So I think the biggest challenge is breaking down that first barrier and getting people to actually listen to you Mm -hmm. and kind of maybe like check out from what they previously thought and start learning. You know, as you're saying that, I'm realizing, of course, you're in Michigan, you're in the Midwest. When I think about the educating in in New York, it's not a world where lots of people are hunting. So you have a very different sort of base in which you have to be making this argument, which which is really, I think, important. Yeah, hunting is like a big, it's a pretty big thing in this area. Um, Hunting season is a big yeah, it's a big thing here. Yeah. So, um, what do you want? What is next? What do you? What's the? What's the next step as far as you and your peers are concerned uh, in in activism? So, I think the next step is getting people registered to vote and then getting them um, actually to vote. So, we also through this um, club at my school called the Internet Club, which is like a service club, we actually did like a voting registration drive for the seniors, Mm -hmm. and we got about two-thirds of them registered to vote. Some of them had been registered to vote, or some of them, I mean, we can't really control who just leaves and everything, but um, yeah, but it was still still pretty successful. We got about two-thirds to be registered to vote, and along with that, we also gave them a paper listing all the places where they can vote um and then we also made a like a powerpoint presentation that we shared to all of them that said like that described the voting process and we went through that presentation before so i think that is a step that people who are of age should take registering to vote and then voting because that's the only way you're going to get your voice heard Mm -hmm. um and then for people that are younger so like i can't register to vote i'm only 17 and i won't be 18 by the time of the election but um I think for us, it's just getting educated and talking to people and voicing our opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm also thinking, you know, you're in school, you're, you know, you're finishing, you're you're working on your education. How do you manage um, all of this activism and your schoolwork and whatever you do also, you know, other kinds of extracurricular things? It's a very demand, it sounds like a very demanding schedule. Yeah, um... I don't know. I guess I just, I guess I just do it. I there, I don't think there's really any like secret or any like specific like schedule. I do. I guess if I like care about something, I'll make it a priority to do it. Um, such as like helping organize the march or you know writing my speech on top of like studying for a test or something. Um, I guess I, I guess I just do it because I feel like. I have this opportunity to voice my opinion when a lot of people don't. So, yeah. Sounds good. Sounds great. That's great. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, is there anything else that you'd want to say or any uh, other thoughts of um, just we've covered quite a uh, lot, but are there any, is there anything that you're – that, that, that's, that's sort of been on your mind that we haven't talked about around, around doing politics? Um, let's see. Well, I guess I don't really have anything to add. Um, can you tell me, like, more, I guess, about, like, what this is for? And, like, sure. What you're, um, all these are? Yes, we're, I, there's a, um, I'm a psychoanalyst, like your, like your dad, and, um, 
I'm an editor on a, an e-journal, something that is just published uh, on the, online. It's called psychoanalysis.today, and anybody can go on it. So it's not like a membership organization. And um, so this interview, I'm going to be editing it with a couple of others that I'm doing. And, um, and then it will be uh, translated, because the, the, um, the group is um, French-speaking, German, uh, Portuguese and Spanish as well as English so it'll have an international readership and we also have a Facebook presence so often we'll post part of what we you know get a written article or a video on Facebook so that we we get educate people and I'm going to write an introduction so it's part of an issue of the journal that's called learning from children learning from childhood and it's really I wanted to do this because I think it's so, it's such a particular moment when your generation and the generation of young activists are really stepping forward in a very, um, in a very intense way. Now, in my generation, in the 60s, that, that happened, certainly college yeah. kids uh, around Vietnam. Yeah. But the other thing that I was really struck by, and um, if you've ever seen any of the documentary footage of Eyes on the Prize, the civil rights, it's staggering how young the, the, the people on those marches in Selma and other places are. So it's like interesting to think about how, in fact, is it something that adolescents and young adults are really good at? That it's mm -hmm. that in a sense, there's a, there's a kind of period in which there can be a lot of idealism. And there are various people who've written about adolescence, you know, as a time of ethics and concern. So I, I just thought it had psychological interest. I think it'll be interesting for an international readership to listen to what your generation is doing. So that's that's its that's really its its function. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I guess I'd like to start by asking you what uh, got you started either working on this issue or generally being being active in these kinds of ventures. I guess like with this issue, um, I really started to be more active with it and um, collaborate with people at my school um, over it after the park was moving. I think that like because the students at Parkland were really keeping it alive and keeping that the voice alive and the conversation going, um, it really inspired kids at other schools to do the same. So I, I really started getting into it then. Um, and I think part of why I really started getting into it is because it is, you know, something that impacts me and my peers every day. You know, there's always the chance that uh, someone could come in the school and and try to cause violence but also living in Chicago um, we've dealt with gun violence you know for many many years and so this is a good out this issue is a good outlet to talk about the ongoing gun violence that has been happening in our country um, just like separate from schools as well so, so it starts in something you can really identify, and then it starts to come home in so many, so many ways. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, I think that that's what's interesting about an issue like this is that it touches on so many separate issues um, as well because we have to find the root, um, and then we have to look at like the underlying problems and everything that like kind of builds that surface in order for the issue become so so big and um and to be ongoing like it has been. Mm -hmm. So it's that's uh, it's a really interesting idea that something you start and suddenly everything expands in directions you hadn't anticipated. Um, what's it been like to actually do the do the organizing work at your school? Um, yeah. So I've been working with um, mainly two of my really, really great friends, um, Rory Haynes and Maypop Aaron, who have been really like, we've all been kind of collaborating, so it wasn't just on one person. Um, but 
uh, we did a walkout, I believe it was March 4th, it was like in um, early March, and we had a walkout just for our school, um, where we walked up Thorndale and down Broadway in the north side of Chicago and to our um, our state representative office, um, Jan Schakowsky, and so the week before planning that was, it was just kind of crazy, I guess, um, but it was definitely like, we had a lot of support because everyone cared about the issue. Um, there are always are going to be those people that are like, oh, what's it going to do? You know, what's it going to help? Um, but then you see those people coming out to the walkouts later or coming to the protest or, you know, posting the information on Snapchat or Facebook or whatever. Um, so it's interesting just to see how the people that, that claim to be nonchalant about these things um, really can come around to it. And can be touched by it. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and especially with, with like, they hear the voices of everyone around them and the voices of their friends being like, this is a thing that you should care about and participate in because, like, what's the harm? Um, and then they are influenced by that, um, which is, is really important, I think. What's the part, or is there a part that's been difficult in, in sort of, maybe you have a, this is the first time you're doing this kind of thing, maybe you have more experience, or what's, what's the most uh, challenging part of this? Yeah, so this is the first time I've ever really, like, helped with organizing something. I've, I've participated in many protests in Chicago, um, many Black Lives Matter protests. I went to um, the Women's March in D.C. last year. But this is the first time actually like trying to organize, and even though it is just on my school level, um, it's it's just difficult. To, one thing being a student and trying to balance it, um, like I I still need to make sure that my grades are up. Um, I am a senior, I need to make sure I graduate and stuff like that, and um, kind of balancing all of that as well as like other extracurricular activities. Um, and so since this this is thing happened so suddenly um it kind of was just like something to stack on top of all that and um that balancing work has been really difficult also i think that kind of separate from the organizing but just like being involved in the issue um it's really difficult just like going it's like nowadays facebook is just kind of a political landmine um huh. whenever i go on there it's, it's really difficult to go on and like you know people that don't support the issue posting stuff about like oh this is like why it doesn't matter this is why what they're saying is wrong all of this stuff and just I think especially hearing from older people from adults you know like oh this is why the youth is doing this quote unquote and not really people not being informed and, and having to kind of either choose to interact in those online conversations, um, which can be a huge time suck and a huge, yeah. like, energy suck, um, especially when nothing will come of it, um, because of people's social intelligence um, and their uh, refusal to be fluid in how they think, um, or I have to step away and be like, okay, it doesn't, my time isn't worth it this um, mm. person right now, but also then I get the effect of like feeling guilty because I didn't do anything, I guess. I don't know. Um, That's so complicated because you, you, you need to balance your time. It's so complicated and yet you start to feel, oh my gosh, I'm letting something down. And these are, I think these are things that people feel a lot when they start to do political work of how much, how far, Yeah. what else do I do? And like, one thing that um, has been, what one thing that the kids in Parkland that I've been doing that's really important is it's using their the privilege that they have um, for their platform. But I also like a lot of people, me as well. Um, it's I'm on board with the movement, obviously, but part of me is also like has trouble because of you know, the gun violence that has affected, like, my friends and my family, mm -hmm. my friend family um, mm -hmm. in Chicago, um, and how those people never, there was never a, a 
and like media turned to those issues as much mm-hmm. as this is um, I don't know I just think balancing all those different mm-hmm. political views and, and mindsets is really difficult too and and, and trying to um, kind of remove myself from the idea of like being divided into like the March for Our Lives movement and the BLM or like the gun violence movement in Chicago and kind of finding myself in the middle and supporting both at once. Mm-hmm. Um, and along with that, keeping myself informed and, and just making sure that when I do say something, it's based off something. Um, mm-hmm. Because it's really easy to attack someone when they don't have their facts mm-hmm. Um And so making sure that like I stay um, conscious, I guess, of, mm-hmm. of what I'm saying and what I'm saying out there. So let me let me ask you one last question, if if I can, which is, um, what do you think in your history or in your family, or is there when you think about, you've talked about very particular reasons that you've become active in this and its relation to Chicago and to being a student and gun violence, but I wonder and more personally, um, when you think about this part doing these kinds of projects. Um, do you think about something in your own history that's important to that or in your family? Um, it's interesting um, with my family because a lot of my family um, resides on kind of the right side and um, me and, and my immediate family here in Chicago, um, we reside very left. Um, and it's interesting because I haven't talked to them about this. Um, I seen the student, I'm interested to see their views on it. Um, but I don't know. It's I think since like I living in Chicago, I've been removed from like my actual extended family for a, a while. Like they live in Pennsylvania. Um, we don't I'm just very busy. We don't really get to see them um, often. So it's it's interesting because we are um, very different in mm-hmm. our views, and um, I I don't know if they would support this, um, or or if they wouldn't. I don't know, but um, it sounds like your immediate family is very much of this kind of thinking. Yeah, my immediate the family that lives here in Chicago, like my mother and my sister and my father and uh, my stepmother, they're all very, we're, we all have the same views, and I think part of that is because, you know, they raised me, um, <laughs> but also because we, we, I grew up in an urban environment, and both of them, my mother and my father, chose to, to remove themselves from, um, you know, where they grew up, where very, like, suburban, middle-class places, they chose to go somewhere urban, they're both artists, um, so I think from the get-go, they had always had that mindset and it kind of traveled on to me, but I, me and my sister kind of elevated it, I guess, and especially as I become more active in political issues, um, it becomes more elevated as I become more informed. Um, and as, as issues become okay to talk about, I think that's interesting as well, how a lot of people use the argument that, oh, like a lot uh, with LGBTQ stuff, a lot of people are like, well, why is everyone gay all of a sudden? And it's not that they're gay all of a sudden, it's that they feel like they can talk about it. Mm-hmm. It's it's not like, why is everyone against guns all of a sudden? It's not that all of a sudden we're against guns, it's that we can talk about it now. We have a platform now, mm-hmm. and we're getting the visibility. Um, so, yeah. Really, that's just, thank you so much for, for yeah. I thank you for doing this work. I have to say, I think in my generation, because I was very political in the 70s, I, I feel very much that what you're doing is so uh, incredibly important and powerful. And I'm just very grateful to you for doing it. And thank you for talking to me. And yeah, for <laughs> it's, talk to me. Uh, yeah.